1960s were, for me, the 30s of my age. Um, and very exciting years. I was serving in my second congregation just outside of Columbus, Ohio. This wonderful church I was serving uh, became aware of a real shift in my conscience and my delivery, my speaking. I attended the Washington March, um, went, drove down to Portsmouth, Ohio, where the train was coming through from Chicago, I think, and it just picked up all these people all along the way and delivered us in Washington in the early morning and spent the day there and that night took the train back. Marvelous, wonderful experience. But the thing that there are two items that I wanted to really focus on. Um, voter registration in Mississippi. Uh, there were pickets, and this was moving very slowly because they they just weren't opening up the uh, the uh, voting rights to the uh, African Americans. So, and picketing is not easy work. Picketing is hard, and most of them don't last very long. People give a couple of days and they're done. And I think the authorities know just wait it out; it'll go away. And they would; they just go away. Well. I took part in a picket that didn't go away. And the reason was that in New York, the Presbyterians, the Methodists, and the Mennonites, and I think there might have been one other denomination, I do remember, talked together about whether they could find recruits from around about to go down and spend a week. And I was recruited out of Columbus. And a friend of mine was recruited, so the two of us went together, two Presbyterians, and we went down to Hattiesburg. We flew out Sunday afternoon, uh, had the morning church services, Sunday afternoon we went out, flew down to Hattiesburg, and uh, we were housed in the uh, black community in, an, in, a, um, in a TV repair shop. Our group was put into two parts. In the morning, one group would picket, the other group would go house to house encouraging families to vote. And then in the afternoon, we would switch. So um, uh, while you were picketing, a lot of walking. I tell you, after five days, my legs were very sore. <laughs> but there were always people over here, and over here, and there, uh, having some obscene things to say to us. Um, creative comments. <laughs> Occasionally they one would venture forth uh, to uh, kind of meet up with us and spit. Um, and we were told no retaliation. This is nonviolent. No retaliation. If you do, you're the one that goes to jail, not the others. Uh, so if they spit in your face, you just get out your Kleenex. Uh, if they, uh, nobody, hit, nobody touched us, fortunately, but you don't touch them back. And that was in, it, instilled within us that we were, we were to do our job and to ignore what was happening around there. Our pictures were taken the first morning and were not in the newspaper the next day, not with names, but there they were. And so people knew who we were. We tried to get appointments with the, uh, for us, the Presbyterian pastors, but you know, it's funny, they were always out of town. <laughs> Never got in. I don't blame them. We were doing what they could not do. And that was okay. The only clergy person that would see us was the Jewish rabbi. And we got an appointment with him, but he said, you come out late at night, don't get there before 11, and you make sure you're not being followed. So we made some meanderings around and went out to see him, and, and we talked quite lengthily about the situation and the tensions and so forth. Um, so the mornings we pick up, the afternoon went house to house, door to door, encouraging these people, and that was no, it was a delightful task, but we found out in the evening how difficult it would be for black people to, to, to register because their names were published in the paper the next day. And most of these people were domestics, and they were fired, just like that. In the evening, we all gathered for rallies, at different places in Hattiesburg. 
Um, and these would be a couple hours where there would be testimonials and encouragements, and we were introduced. And, um, and then you hear these stories from Mrs. Jones, who was let go yesterday. She was, had been working five years at this house, this home, as a cook or whatever. She was fired. Very, very difficult. But they were upbeat, they were courageous, and I think they knew <laughs> that they were on the winning side. And fortunately, Congress ultimately passed those laws that uh, didn't require picketing anymore. So I, I didn't miss a Sunday in church, and, uh, and life went on, but I'll never forget it. It was my adventure in what I called into a, a foreign country. It was that different. I did not tell the congregation I was going. Um, sometimes you anticipate things in people's lives, and uh, I knew the risk was if I got arrested, they sure would know. <laughs> but I, I just, I just kind of went away. And uh, but when I got back Saturday, the next day I did tell them. This past week I have been. And then that, that first week back, I wrote a long report, a five-page typewritten long report on the background and everything about it, copied it, had, had those copies to the congregation. And it was okay with the congregation. I, I blessed them because some others might say no. Uh, I have two children, they were young. Uh, our son was maybe five, four. Our daughter was just an infant. Yeah. I don't think they knew what was going on. Um, uh, the next church was in Michigan and I did get involved in some housing issues up there and our son had a paper route into one sub and he got a lot of flack from some members because uh, his, his father was messing around with stuff. He doesn't, it's none of his business. <laughs> but um, I, I, you know, in this particular one, the, the kids were unaffected and um, the only problem Wileen faced because I was gone in absentia and Some something water main broken. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they all come down to the house to find where the preacher is. <laughs> Not here. <laughs> I was aware that a great many statements had been produced by uh, organizations. Academic organizations would produce things and the church to its councils, Presbyterian would write a council statement, and Synod would write a statement, and General Assembly would write a statement. But I was asking myself, what's being said in the churches? Is anything being said in the churches on Sunday morning where people are worshiping? I didn't know, and I don't think you can find out. But I decided that I would produce a book, and so I did. I gathered 20 good sermons. I had some help in locating who the preachers ought to be contacted, and they sent me their sermons. And I, uh, one came from uh, Martin Luther King, and I had 19 others. Uh, all, they, they had to be sermons preached in a, a live congregation. This is no academic exercise or no lecture. Sermon with people sitting there listening to this sermon on civil rights uh, justice. And uh, I sent it to Harper Row, and they liked it very much, but they refused it. Too bad. <laughs> I sent it to Abington, and they grabbed it. And it was published. And it had a long life. Uh, it was national, and it was just very gratifying to see <laughs> my book. <laughs> the library here doesn't have it. <laughs> and I don't have it. <laughs> what was the name of that book? The Pulpit Speaks on Race.